I'm J.R. Church. Welcome to today's analysis of the news. Just a bit of housekeeping here. Over the weekend, our website was hacked by some unknown wicked people. I don't know who. But um, when you went to click on to our website, you saw this warning come up saying that this website had malware. Well, we got right onto it and got it fixed. And we got Google's search engine that put up that little dastardly sign to take it back off again so we're clean and green and maybe not so mean but we hope you're watching our webcast today and you'll go back and pick up Sunday's webcast and Monday's webcast and get caught up to date. I want to mention to you um, from Israel Today headline news you know the Fatah movement Mahmoud Abbas the Palestinian Authority has been having a big a uh, meeting down in Bethlehem. Well, it closed out yesterday, on Tuesday. And um, according to this article from Israel Today Headline News, once again, Mahmoud Abbas's Fatah party, the Palestinian faction, uh, the international community wants everyone to view as moderate, has proved itself to be anything but moderate. At the conclusion of the Fatah convention in Bethlehem on Tuesday, party members voted to oust most of the old guard central committee members and replace them with younger party activists and the international media is trying to paint them as reformers. Fatah has been plagued by corruption and mismanagement and the new central committee members may indeed do something to remedy that if for no other reason than to stop losing political ground to Hamas. But... These fresh faces, as some media outlets referred to them, are some of Fatah's most violent, blood-soaked personalities. Leading the list, for, for example, is Marwan Barghouti, uh, who is serving several life sentences in, his, in an Israeli prison for his role as leader of the Fatah-aligned terror group and the, uh, the Al-Aqsa Brigades, which killed numerous Israelis at the start of the recent terror war. Lebanon-based Fatah strongman uh, Sultan Abu al Ainain, who was described by Fatah insiders who spoke to the Jerusalem Post as a ruthless thug, is also near the top of the list. Favorites of past U.S. presidents Mohammed Akhlan and Jabril Rajoub uh, also won places in the powerful Central Committee. During their time as the Palestinian Authority security chiefs in Gaza and the West Bank, respectively, Dachlan and Rajoub actively facilitated terrorist activity against Israel. As a top advisor to Abbas today, uh, Mohammed Dachlan openly advocates the return of near open warfare with Israel. Indeed, earlier in the week, all of the new members of the Central Committee voted in favor of a new Fatah party platform that officially places the option of renewed terrorism against Israel back on the table in violation of the Palestinian Authority's signed peace agreements. The new party platform also officially endorses Barghouti's Al-Aqsa Brigades as an integral part of the Palestinian security forces. Well, so much for the nice Palestinians. And by the way, you know, Israel's been making a lot of concessions lately, but the Palestinians have made none. And so 71 American senators have sent a letter to President Obama this past Monday, a couple of days ago, saying that they would also like to see some Arab concessions. Um... This is another display of growing unrest over President Barack Obama's overbearing pressure for Israel to meet Arab demands regarding the Jewish settlements. And so this bipartisan group of senators praised Mr. Obama for asking Arab leaders to make more of a show of supporting peace with Israel, but said Washington needs to start applying some pressure for positive concrete action on the Arab side. Uh, in the letter, the senators noted that Israel has taken several positive concrete steps in recent months, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's public support for the eventual creation of a Palestinian state, the removal of Israeli checkpoints, 
and Israeli assistance in bolstering the Palestinian economy. The senators insisted that those actions need to be met by reciprocal Arab concessions, such as ending the Arab League boycott of Israel, or meeting openly with Israeli officials, or establishing open trade relations with Israel, or in, in, ensuing, or issuing uh, visas to Israeli citizens, and inviting Israelis to participate in academic and professional conferences, and... Uh, Sporting events. Boy, wouldn't you like to see a couple of football teams, one from Israel and one from the Palestinians, playing down on the football field? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, here's something from the Jerusalem Post. Benjamin Netanyahu recently, uh, or recently, it was on Tuesday, visited the Hatzarim Air Force Base east of Beersheba, and he said... Well, he said, uh, there are no winds of war blowing along the northern border. So, he said, we do not see anything special up there, he told reporters. There are no winds of war blowing. This is a storm created by the media. The prime minister's calming remarks came a day after he warned Lebanon that it would pay a heavy price if Hezbollah attacked Israel. Concerns in Israel are that the Shiite group, that is the Hezbollah in Lebanon, are planning attacks on Israeli targets abroad, particularly in the Sinai. And of course, you may recall, a plot to assassinate Ambassador Shalom Cohen in Cairo was recently thwarted by Egyptian security forces. And those uh, assassins were Hezbollah. Now, this article says that Israel on Tuesday issued a travel warning of its nationals visiting the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt, advising them to leave the area immediately. The warning came from the government's counterterrorism unit. The unit warned Israelis of planned attacks during the upcoming holiday period, which begins with Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year at sundown on September 18th. The announcement mentioned tensions along the northern border of Sinai with the Gaza Strip, as well as recent threats from Hezbollah to strike at Israelis. The terrorism unit in Israel warned of threats to kidnap Israelis abroad with emphasis on businessmen, and partic in particular ones working in Arab and Muslim countries. The message advises Israelis to be wary at all times to avoid unplanned meetings and to alter their daily routine if they're on long-term trips. The counterterrorism warning added that Israelis should avoid traveling to Colombia, Kenya. That's interesting. That's where Obama's from, isn't it? Kenya, Sudan, Iraq, and Yemen. So, Israelis are still on pins and needles. They're still afraid of, uh, that the Palestinians or the Hamas in the south or the Hezbollah in the north will capture some more of them. You know, uh, uh, the young soldier uh, uh, Galid Shalat is still in Hamas um, captivity. And uh, they've done nothing to for Israel to get him back. In other words, Israel has tried and tried and tried to negotiate with these guys to try to get their soldier back, but so far to no avail. Well, the world hates Israel, but I want you to know, God loves them. And God has a covenant with Abraham. It is an everlasting covenant. And regardless of what any person in this world might think, that the Jews are not Jews, or that they deserve what they get, or they're beating up on the poor Palestinians. Hey, God is on Israel's side. If you want to be on God's side, you need to be on Israel's side. For God had promised Abraham, and he still means it today, I will bless those that bless you, I will curse those who curse you. I'm J.R. Church. We'll see you again tomorrow with our analysis of the news.